I have watched um, uh, numerous uh, news reports on this case uh, involving the Yandels, and they have gone to uh, uh, great lengths. The the Yandels and probably their well, their attorney and and their and another guy who's involved, Chris um, Rausch. What's his last name? Ralph. 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 Chris Ralph. They've gone to great lengths to kind of create or try to construct a narrative, if you will, about this case. And so what we want to do is actually put out some facts. They have used terms like witch hunt. They have used terms like medical necessity and, and, and all these other things. And I kind of want to go through a few things today to maybe illuminate Some of this, uh, some of this stuff we're hearing. Um, this is about nothing more than public safety and our neighborhoods and our kids. And I want to go into that. You know, he mentioned. I think this 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 guy. They mentioned uh, witch hunt. Let me tell you how we got involved in this case. Okay, we got involved in this case because the Yandels had an investor who was supplying money to the Yandels uh, so that they could go out and get equipment and the Yandels were paying the investor off with smokable marijuana. Okay, well, that worked out pretty good until the Yandels figured that they were done paying their debt to, to their investor and they stopped supplying the smokable marijuana, at which time the investor calls the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office and we kicked off an investigation. Okay. And prior to really getting anywhere, I guess the investor didn't think that our sense of urgency was what it should be. So he decides to call in an anonymous complaint of gunshots being fired in that neighborhood. further exposing law enforcement to danger by having to respond to a case like that. Well, he's been charged for that. I think he's in the process of being charged with that. So we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to deal with that. So that's how we became involved in this case. And then what got us further involved in this case is that all of you know one of our, one of our investigative tactics is to go out and do a trash pull. You've reported on them before. Okay, and in pulling the trash pull, there was enough marijuana and marijuana associated items in those plastic bags on the curb to keep an entire middle school high for an entire summer. A middle school, by the way, that was located less than one mile away from the Yandels who were just simply growing a little bit of weed for, for medical and medicinal purpose. This case, like a lot of others, is nothing more than about deceit and about greed on the part of Mr. Yandel his wife, and the people that are associated with him. Um, <clears throat> they have been trying to cloak themselves in a in, in legitimacy. You saw the bogus things they put up on the door. 
I heard that, um, I heard uh, in one of the news reports that they were just using one room. You saw the video. This was an industrial grow house. Now, we know, for instance, they're not making, they're extracting a little bit of oil out to help children because Because I actually am in an effort with a, with a few women that some of you have reported on uh, in the northern part of the county that are working very hard because they do have children that are suffering. Some of you reported on these women. And they, when they met up with these people, they realized real quick that they weren't legitimate. Okay? So if they're doing all of this stuff to help people medically, and with this oil, uh, the only thing I can think of reason to put smokable marijuana in bins is to ship it and to distribute it, probably over long distances. Um, they have somehow found an attorney, and, a, and, and they've got a, they got a deal going where they've got some, somebody that calls themselves a health care practitioner, and they think they have found some esoteric, esoteric part of the law that is going to allow them to, to write a note so you can bring to, I guess, your local grow house and get marijuana for the tune of $300. And that law that I think Commander Mulligan was talking about has, does not supersede or have any effect on 893 on controlled substances. one of the earliest proponents of medical marijuana. Now, I, I like the system that we have in place for approving drugs through the Food and Drug Administration. I don't like asking our citizens to vote on the efficacy of drugs like we did this, this last time. Um, but the Andels, they hurt this medical marijuana process for those people that are suffering and for those people that might be able to get some usage out of medical marijuana, they hurt this process by, 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 by you know, uh, uh, going around and pleading a case for medical marijuana when they're doing nothing but growing a bunch of dope and, and distributing it. Now, Mr. Yandel should know that. I don't know what's changed because in 2008, he pled guilty or pled no contest, I believe, to possession of marijuana. So I guess something happened between 2008 and now uh, that convinced him that it's okay to grow marijuana. And, and of course, I don't understand if they're so convinced that what they're doing is okay, why do we just have a referendum on, on medical marijuana? The bottom line, folks, is that I want to convey is this, and I want to get into a couple of other issues. I've heard a lot about the fish in the house, okay? And I've been, I've received thousands of emails from, from PETA, and, and we love animals like y'all do, okay? We love fish, we, we do that. Now, now, just so the public knows, a lot of these fish were kept in a, in a, in a, uh, the same kind of lap wading pool you would put a three-year-old in, but, three or four days after their initial arrest, okay, they were allowed back in that house to get whatever they wanted out of that house. 
to include all the fish in the house. And they didn't do that. What they did was they went in and they videotaped and they took out certain select items. But they weren't, re I mean, I know later she was wailing and crying because of the fish, some, some of the fish had died. If they were that concerned, if it was my house, my dog or my fish are coming with me. They went into that house, they had unfettered access. Now, once code enforcement got involved, and they see, I mean, you see the stuff in that house, First thing you're going to do is shut it down until somebody can come in and say that it's safe. Once code enforcement became involved, you're darn right they're going to control who goes in and what goes out. Okay, but they were allowed to go in there and, and um, remove any items they want, and they did. They removed a bunch of suitcases and things to live on while their case was going on. But they didn't remove their fish. This is nothing more than a drug grow house, an industrial drug grow house. All of you have reported on these things for over the years. There's a little bit of a twist here because we got a lawyer who's fresh out of law school who's got an idea that he has found something unique and he hasn't. And they're, they're, uh, and, and they're, they're doing everything, and they're doing a pretty good job of it, of getting on the news and, and talking the nonsense. This was not relegated to one room in the house. This, was a, this house was dedicated to the growing of marijuana. You saw the pictures. He didn't have a corner out in the garage growing dope. The whole house was dedicated to growing dope. He mentioned that we damaged items. Uh, I saw him in one of the reports and we didn't damage any items. The bottom line is that fortunately uh, nobody got hurt, okay? And they were arrested this morning. I think all of you know that, okay, right? I think you know that they were charged with trafficking and their attorney and the other guy running around, both of them got suspended driver's licenses and we didn't arrest them like we could have just to show, you know, I mean, I think one of them did get a ticket though, didn't they? Yeah, one of them got a ticket. But th th these, are, these, these provocateurs are out here trying to create a narrative that is completely false. And, and that's what I want to do. I want to call them out on them, tell them it's false, and it's about greed and money, okay? And, and they're trying to pull on people's heartstrings. Well, I got a message for the Yandels. That, that neighborhood, they don't want the Yandels. The, they don't want the Yandels and their, their innocent uh, uh, medical marijuana operation up there. They don't want it in that neighborhood. And I can tell you this, I haven't checked with Joe Joyner, but I bet Joe Joyner and the parents that send kids to that school less than a mile away, they don't want them there either throwing their, 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 the marijuana that doesn't reach their level of usable marijuana to be thrown out in the curb. So I'm a little passionate about this, as you can probably tell, and I'm passionate for a couple of different reasons. And number one is we see so many of these false narratives that citizens try to advance. And the other thing is this, uh, these are delicate times on this whole marijuana issue. And, and there is a lot of legitimacy, and everybody knows it, to medical marijuana. And this type of stuff, that doesn't help matters. It doesn't help the society community, and it doesn't help the decision makers. And, um, and that's, about, that's about all I really wanted to cover. Um, there has been lawsuits filed in this case. First thing they did was run the federal court to sue us. And um, then they filed another suit to get back in the house, which of course uh, they did, and the judge granted that. Uh, and they, I guess they've been able to get back in that house. And today they've been charged with trafficking. There are elements of this case that are still under investigation. 
and I'm not going to go into detail today on what those elements are. But we have learned things from certain people since we've been investigating, including their investor, that need more investigation. So we're going to continue to do that. They can get on the news and the newspapers all they want about how they're just doing the things that just, just an innocent couple up there growing a little bit of weed for, for medical purposes. But that ain't what was happening. And, and the public knows it actually too. So I appreciate you coming in and doing a little cover on this. And I'll take any questions that you'd like if you have any. No, no, but that's another deal about sovereign. That's a whole other subject. Why are they claiming that now? Well, I know that there were some questions when it first happened. He said because of the signs on the doors. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if you found any link. Yeah, no, we haven't we haven't found any link, but that could be coming because the sovereign citizens they don't they don't have to follow the law according to them, and and the Yandels I think probably believe in that philosophy, so it wouldn't surprise me. But I have not heard of any link at all between sovereign citizens and what they were doing up here. I mean, if they, you know, I mean, I wish they were just honest about what they were doing up there and we could move forward, but um, anybody else have any questions? Do you know about the customer? Who? Their customer. Their um, customer. Actually, we're still doing some, because of that, we're doing some additional uh, investigations on that. Um, and, uh, and we do know some things, but we can't release anything like that just yet. I've probably released a lot more than I should have on this case, but I, I mean, and it's not y'all's fault. I got so sick and tired of them going in front of the TV and telling everybody what nice people they are and how they didn't know. I mean, you saw the pictures. I, none of y'all want to be, have, none of you guys want to raise your children there or have your, your parents live next door to that. Uh, and, um, but, um, so we, we do know some customer issues um, and I know some of that's being looked at. Well, he's pulling a tall tale because he doesn't, you saw the marijuana, there's pounds of marijuana on those, on that stuff. There's pounds of marijuana in that house. I mean, you know, they're trying to minimize it. I mean, I know the young man hasn't been a lawyer long and he's going to find his way around, but the truth is, I mean, that's a marijuana grow house. You saw the marijuana plants, they're huge, huge buds on them. Camera, I mean, they got the, they've got the, they've got the ultraviolet lights. They've got, they've been, have they been scamming JEA? Huh? Not that we're aware of. So it didn't get picked up, the excess use of lighting? The electric bills were extremely high, but... It, it didn't hit the... Okay. It, you, you know, um, but, but my answer to that is, I think he's... I think my answer to that attorney is, he is, um, he is perpetuating a false narrative, and he can't explain it away. We see the tapes. We saw the truth. I mean, if... if uh, I wish... And we have the pictures, too of the marijuana that was being discarded at the curb, okay, just for some seventh or eighth grader to stumble across and find it. And, uh, and that was a heck of a lot more than, what'd you say, 39? Yeah, he was saying 532 grams. Uh, that's utter nonsense, utter nonsense. I think he's probably, I think he probably had about $150,000, $200,000 worth of marijuana in that house, don't you think? Yes. You know, so that's a lot more than that. I mean, this is not a, like I said, this is not a, we didn't go out, this was not proactive work on our part. I mean, we had a, we had a problem because they stopped supplying marijuana to their investor. And then next thing you know, we're getting false reports of gunshots. This is happening in a residential neighborhood. So we had to get involved. And we got involved, we found a, you know, and they had, they thought they had everything figured out with the attorney in one office, the doctor working out of the next office, so the attorney sends the, whoever the client is over to the doctor and excuse me not a doctor we don't know what they were but they weren't a doctor and for 300 bucks they give him a little bogus card to go get bogus marijuana so you know it's a scam and it's about greed and it's about deception and I'm willing to call them out on that and and I think I have any other questions uh, there actually was, when they were, were arrested today, Ms. Yandel ran from the officers into the, into the interior of the home. Uh, she fled the arrest, and so they had to run after her and, and, and put their hands on her 
So she was arrested for resisting arrest without violence. Okay, and the Mr. Yandel, does anybody, can you characterize what he did, Sergeant? He bucked up, I guess, or what happened? Or did he get charged with resisting without? Why? Why? So he was pulling away during the arrest? So he's pulling away during the arrest. So, and again, those are two misdemeanor charges. They were not charged, they were not hammered with resisting arrest with violence or anything like that even though he was pulled away and it was probably could have stood that charge. But those were added charges today. And the trafficking charges, they are minimum mandatory, I think of three years, I mean, and, and they're gonna have to answer to that. And that their burden's gonna be on them to prove to people. But I I just think it's sad because you guys have interviewed them, so I know you know who they are. There are people in our community that, that, you know, some of this stuff is a great help to their children, and they need it. I mean, and they really, really need it, and it's, it's not the kind, it's not the, it's, you guys know what I'm talking about. It does not get, it, it, the, the, uh, the cannabinoids are not at the level to, to induce euphoria, and it's helped with some of these children with seizures, and all this nonsense does is cloud the issue up for people. And it, and it keeps people from making good decisions. So, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I might be missing something, but what led to the arrest today? Like what? We were, we were, well, when we went in and we did the, did the search warrant, okay, they were arrested that day. What charge were they arrested on? Possession? Cultivation. Cultivation and everything. But, so, we, we had to go back and look at what other charges would be applicable based on what we found during the search warrant. And because of the amounts, of marijuana, okay, they're charged with trafficking. Now, if we're still investigated and we find out that not only were they trafficking in that, but we have probable cause that they were trafficking in some other drug, well, then you could get more charges. So um, I know he said in one of his things that, you know, there hasn't been any subsequent arrests. I guess his attorney didn't tell him. Well, that's probably because they're conducting follow-up investigations to find out what they got. Well, today they found out we've got trafficking as a charge, and they may get rearrested. We've oftentimes arrested people as or rearrested people as they sit in jail on some original charges. So that's just a natural consequence of the case developing. And I can't rule out that there won't be further arrests in the future for the for the Andels. What is the amount that you need in order to have a trafficking charge? Matt? Twenty five pounds. Twenty five pounds. So I, I think that kills his argument about the 300, 500 grams, yeah. And I, I wasn't on this when they got here, but I mean, how long do you think this operation has been going on for? That's a great question. And I'm going to relude. Do we have any, Shaggy? Do we? It had to have been a, how long was the operation going on for? They've been set up there for a while. They've been in the house since 2012. Right. Far back as 12? Yep. Yeah, at, at least that. I mean, it's a pretty sophisticated, would you characterize it as a pretty sophisticated operation? I would characterize it as the largest amount of growth that I've seen in my 12 years of working in Sarkoff. Now see that? I mean, the guy, I mean, that's a lot of growth. That's a lot of equipment. And, um, you know, I don't know where it was going to end, but, uh, and I'm not sure where it's going to end because, you know, we're just glad. That, hey, I'm just glad that one of those cylinders that I don't know anything about didn't blow up and hurt some of the residents in that neighborhood. Or one of my deputies winds up getting killed responding to a shot fired call. That was nothing but a bogus call or any of this other stuff that, I mean, no good comes of that. No good comes of that. And if we ever do get medical marijuana, that ain't going to be what happens. It'll be a controlled, managed process. And that's precisely why the argument for a controlled managed process. So you don't have these, uh, ne these ne'er-do-wells out in these neighborhoods uh, carrying on like that and exposing everybody to danger. Okay? Any other questions? Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. He's going the distance. He's going for speed.